Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, happy, happy Sunday or whatever day you guys are watching this on. Hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to um, give you a brief update. I know uh, the last video I kind of teased you guys. I picked up, oh, that's the wrong side of the box. I picked up, <laughs> I picked up this, this uh, Intel Optane Memory. And, um, you know, Intel has been saying it's exclusive to really two series uh, chipsets within socket 1151. Of course, it is compatible with uh, socket 2066. Um, and, uh, you know, I was just curious. This is basically just, it, it, well, it is, it's just a, uh, a standard M.2 uh, 80 millimeter PCI Express interface um, little stick of memory. And, uh, you know, although the memory type that's on this little stick, you know, obviously is uh, 3D cross point technology, it's not based on NAND uh, technology, um, like most of the SSDs you'll find in the marketplace today, really all of them besides these. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, if I could put this in my AMD Ryzen system on an AM4 platform and have it work. I'd heard rumors previously of people popping these things into like a, uh, you know, uh, socket 1151 with an older, you know, one series chipset, a Z170 or uh, uh, H170 chipset, etc., and having them work. Um, and when I say work, I mean that they are identifiable um, by the by the computer, but you can't use all of the the software um, that Intel has created. Uh, to kind of basically make this like an intermediary, uh, you know, cache, non-volatile cache, whatever you want to call it, between your system RAM um, and your other primary storage, but whether that is, you know, NAND-based, uh, you know, um, uh, NVMe, you know, PCI Express, um, you know, solid-state drives, whether that is a SATA-based, you know, NAND uh, solid-state drive or a hard drive, um, you know, hooked up via SATA or whatever the case may be. But um, anyway, um, that that that's one thing where Intel really has just implemented, uh, you know, proprietariness through software. So the software that Intel uses, and I think it's just called, you know, Optane software or whatever, I could be wrong, but it's just um, basically a little piece of software that you load, you know, on your computer, you know, within your operating system, um, and that software basically goes and looks at your, um, you know, your UEFI, and it makes sure that you have the proper code uh, in your UEFI and BIOS. Make sure that you're running, you know, um, a compatible chip, uh, even on a two series SOC 1151 platform. You still, you can't use this, or at least the software anyway, to make this kind of a cache unless you have um, one of the core i-series processors. If you're using like a Pentium, um, anything below an i3, uh, that software will still kind of say, hey, you're not good enough for us to let you use this uh, as a caching solution. Um, but it will still recognize these and let you use it just as standard memory, uh, just as you would with a standard solid state disk or a standard hard drive or whatever. So um, I'm gonna show you guys some, some pictures and some screenshots. Um, I did a couple of just little quick tests and I know that this is not really designed for, um, you know, to compete necessarily with, you know, solid state disk in the market today, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of um, you know what you can expect in terms of compatibility moving forward. Performance is a whole another thing that we're going to have to kind of see how that pans out. Um, you know, Intel really is kind of high on their low latency nature of 3D cross point technology, um, and I did see some of that in testing. Um, you know, you guys can compare these numbers to your own numbers if you have solid state drives running right now. Um, and kind of look and see how how this compares, um, you know, to to your own current solution. And of course, you know there are you know other solutions in the market right now um, with a lot greater bandwidth, you know, a lot a lot greater capacity. 
And that really is where, um, you know, NVMe um, SSDs that are based on NAND technology are heading. Manufacturers have really moved away from the lower latency, you know, uh, single, uh, single level cell, um, even, even multi-level cell, and have really moved on to like, you know, triple level cell uh, technology to be able to fit um, larger and larger capacities, more and more layers um, on top of one another for NAND technology, and they're really going for data density um, and not, not so much concentrating or focusing rather on, on lower latency or even in, um, you know, read and write kind of uh, uh, lifespan, et cetera, if you will, because uh, you know, NAND writes in blocks, whereas this writes on a per bit level. So um, anyway, um, I just want to show you guys, it does work on an AM4 motherboard. This is just one kind of, you know, non-volatile um, memory technology that is going to be coming, um, you know, um, in the next couple of years. In terms of adoption, I don't really see any of these catching on. Um, other than the data center, I just don't see a real, you know, use usefulness for this technology right now. Um, it's still being manufactured, I think, on, on only like a two-layer process, where again, you know, you have NAND being produced on 64-layer, 72-layer processes, um, allowing for a lot more capacity at a much lower cost, um, and, and having, you know, more chips um, gives you just more aggregate performance in terms of bandwidth, throughput, things that most general consumers are the most concerned about. Um, and again, the data center, um, you know, that lower latency, depending on what you're using that memory for, uh, may have more of an impact, again, depending on your use case scenario. But um, anyway, uh, it is compatible. This uh, Optane memory, you know, even though Intel says, hey, it'll only work on, you know, Sock 1151, you know, Z, you know, um, uh, you know, two series uh, motherboards or H2 series motherboards with, you know, i3 or higher chips or, or Socket 2066, um, it will work in reality on any motherboard out there that has, you know, an M.2 slot and uh, it only operates at PCI Express um, 3.2x, which is really all it needs to. Um, it doesn't have enough really umph. You know, it's not. It's not going to be feeding or bottlenecked um, by that 2x connection, as you guys will see in these slides. So, I hope that you guys um, enjoy the short video for a change. And uh, I promise I'm going to do the Xbox uh, One, PlayStation 4 Pro video today. I've done it a million times already, but I want it to be good for you guys. And hopefully I can get that knocked out today and, uh, you know, on the screen for you here very soon. Hope you're all having a phenomenal weekend. Check out these numbers, these screenshots of Optane running uh, on a Ryzen system on AM4. Uh, and realize that, you know, again, you know, the competitors to this technology, um, this exact same technology... Um, you know, was co-developed by Intel and Micron, and Micron will have their versions of this that should be compatible um, even as a caching solution, if you wish, you know, with their own software, etc., um, accepting, you know, the entire ecosystem of devices this will fit in. So that includes AMD uh, and all the other Intel chipsets that have kind of been left out in the cold, um, you know, with AMD's, uh, well, Intel's kind of, uh, you know, hoarding tactics right now. They're trying to have any kind of a feather in their cap right now in terms of proprietary technology, uh, you know, a, a positive differentiator, if you will, um, against really strong competition in the market right now with AMD's, you know, value proposition uh, with CPUs, platforms, etc. So, anyway... Um, you guys have a great weekend, or end of your weekend, week, whatever it may be. You guys are watching this video on, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.